uh, dear students, uh, myself Nataraj Jujapur, I am working as associate professor in KLA Dr. M. S. Sheshagiri College of Engineering and Technology, Belagami, Karnataka. I am having uh, 15 years of experience in teaching. Uh, I will be teaching you the analog electronics. So, session will be on analog electronics. So, according to module 4, we have feedback and oscillator circuits. Uh, first, we will be looking at feedback. In the feedback, we will be looking at feedback concepts, feedback connection types, practical feedback circuits, oscillator operation, FET, field effect transistor, phase shift oscillator, vane bridge oscillator, tuned oscillator circuits crystal oscillator circuit, UJT construction and oscillator. So, this all comprises of module 4. In that module 4, in this session, we will be talking only about feedback circuits. So, first we will be starting with feedback circuits. In the feedback circuits, we will be, students will be get introduced to the feedback concepts, general feedback structure, properties of negative feedback and different configurations of feedback. So, in this session, we will be concentrating on these points. Once this one hour session is covered, you will be able to interpret the significance of feedback, interpret the configurations of feedback and you will be in a position to analyze the circuits containing the feedback. So, these are the outcomes which are expected at the end of this session. Okay. So, for preparing this material or the teaching content, I have referred three textbooks. So, courtesy to Robert Boylstead and Louis Nashelsky, the electronic devices and circuit theory, Pearson publications, 10th edition. So, and this is there for the university syllabus also. This is a prescribed textbook. Apart from this, uh, Robert Boylstead, we will be referring Adel Sedra and Kenneth Smith, Microelectronic Circuits Theory and Applications, Oxford University Press, and Jacob Millman and Halkias, Integrated Electronics, second edition TMH publications. So, these all three textbooks are very important from electronics engineering, not only from analog electronics point of view. So, this, this is the overview, the content from which uh, I have taken the material. Let us first start with introduction, introduction to feedback. Dear all, the feedback is important in each and every system. So, without feedback, no system can improve, no system can perform. Say, if we take an example of our college, where teacher takes feedback from students in order to improve his teaching, in order to improve his performance. If we take in uh, for an example of a company, company manager takes the feedback of his clients regarding his employees. This is in order to improve the performance. So, the same thing is applicable in electronic circuits also. Almost all electronic circuits employ feedback. So, this feedback may be explicit or this feedback may be implicit. Explicit in the sense, the feedback network is seen, the feedback is seen. Implicit in the sense, Im feedback is a part of the circuit where you have to analyze how the feedback is happening. So, almost all electronic circuits employ this kind of feedback or the feedback is employed. The general structure of any control system consists of an amplifier, which is having a gain A, a feedback network beta, input and an output. So, here we, we all have studied this block, right? Amplifier. We all have studied this block. We all have studied this unit, we are going to study this feedback network. 
Okay, so we are going to study this feedback network. Input is what we are applying. This is output. As you can see, you are tapping a output and giving it back to input. The role of feedback network is to take the output, sample it. Part of the output has to be applied to the input. Beta represents gain of the feedback network, how much I am taking from the output. So, beta usually is an attenuator. So, it does the opposite job of the amplifier. Amplifier amplifies it, whereas feedback network attenuates it. Okay. Now, depending on the type of feedback, we are having two kinds of feedback. One is positive feedback and another one is negative feedback. So, electronic circuits, there are two kinds. There are circuits which employ positive feedback, there are circuits which employ negative feedback also. So, both kinds of feedback are there, positive as well as negative. Let us see where positive feedback we can utilize. When it comes to positive feedback, positive feedback in the sense, so this figure illustrates positive feedback. So, here again we have an amplifier A, feedback network beta, output and then we have an input. As you can see, there is a positive sign here. So, the part of the output which is taken back is fed to feedback network. The feedback network adds this part of the output with respect to the input. So, here we are adding. So, Whenever it comes to feedback signal being added with the input, that is called as positive feedback. Positive feedback is widely used in the design of oscillators. So, all the oscillators employ this positive feedback. Okay, so, we, we are going to discuss this in the second part of the module 4, which is oscillator. Whereas, the most important point which all the amplifiers make use of is negative feedback. So, this figure illustrates negative feedback. You have an amplifier here, the feedback network beta, the output, the input. So, what you can observe here? There is a feedback network which is tapping the part of the output that is being fed here in a polarity such that it is negative with respect to input that is it subtracts. So, here part of the output voltage which is fed back here it subtracts from the input and hence it is called as negative feedback. This negative feedback is the one which is widely used in the design of all the feedback amplifiers. Whatever amplifiers you all have studied have this negative feedback which is present implicit. Okay. So, you have already studied many amplifiers now, these all contain actually negative feedback. So, we are going to see now the amplifiers from feedback point of view, how the feedback is present in the amplifiers. Okay. So, that is a part of this unit, feedback amplifiers. So, we have positive feedback and we have negative feedback. So, in the first section, we are going to discuss about the negative feedback that is amplifiers. Okay, so, this is the starting of this unit, which is feedback amplifier. Okay, so, this, this is the general structure of the feedback amplifier. The most important point, feed general structure of feedback amplifier. You have an input signal V s amplifier, feedback network, output signal. So, this modular operation or this operation indicates you, you have a negative feedback that is feedback which is applied, it is subtracting from the input. V s here as you can see, I think you can see V s indicates input signal. So, this is V s input signal, V f is a feedback signal. V i is the difference between V s and V f. 
So, the difference between V s and V f acts as V i. The amplifier here is an open loop amplifier, that is the amplifier which amplifies the input signal with an gain of A. So, this A represents open loop gain of the amplifier. So, V i will be amplified and output will be A into V i at here at the output of amplifier. Then this V naught will be supplied to the feedback network. Feedback network generates V f which is a feedback signal. It subtracts from V s and it will give you the signal V i. We will be calculating A f. So, here A f denotes the closed loop gain of the amplifier. A f will be equal to V naught divided by V s, which will be equal to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, A represents open loop gain of the amplifier beta represents feedback gain. So, this is the feedback gain. So, total gain. So, this is the overall gain. Overall gain will be A f which will be equal to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, this is the general structure of the feedback. There are many why we do this, why there is a feedback, why there is a feedback present, why we are doing this negative feedback there are a lot of advantages. Okay. The first thing feedback provides is higher input impedance. We know that whenever we want to interface amplifiers to any circuitries, logic circuitries or to the external world, requirement is that amplifier should have a high input impedance. Okay. So, here high, when I talk about higher input impedance, if original impedance is z i, then if I subject it to negative feedback, negative feedback with impedance or with feedback will be 1 plus a into beta times the original impedance. So, you will observe that the feedback improves the impedance. Okay. The feedback improves the impedance. So, if I have original impedance as z i. So, z i represents my original impedance. So, this will be changed to z i into bracket 1 plus a into beta. So, this 1 plus a into beta represents a higher input impedance. So, there will be increase in the impedance by a factor 1 plus beta. So, this is called as feedback factor. So, feedback factor is 1 plus a into beta. There will be more stable gain. So, when it comes to often amplifier, amplifier gain is affected by n number of parameters. You have a temperature. So, temperature affects the stability, temperature affects the gain. Whereas, we observe that when we subject it to feedback, okay, the gain will be more stable. So, here gain will be stable, whereas it will be reduced. We observed in the previous slide that original gain was a, then it became a divided by 1 plus a into beta, where 1 plus a into beta is the feedback factor. So, the gain is stable, but it gets reduced. That is a compromise you can say, but we can achieve a stability. Improved frequency response. So, improved frequency response in the sense, the bandwidth of the closed loop amplifier will be more than the open loop. That means, if I subject the amplifier to feedback, its bandwidth will be improved, the range of operation will be improved. One more characteristic what we accept in case of feedback amplifier is low output impedance. So, the whenever we 
connect any amplifier, we accept that output impedance should be low. So, here we can achieve low output impedance, that is possible via feedback. If I have original impedance, if I have original impedance as z of z naught, then the new impedance will be z naught divided by 1 plus a into beta. So, the input the output impedance reduces, the reduces by a factor 1 plus a into beta. So, the feedback provides low output impedance, it reduces the noise which is most important. Uh, open loop amplifiers suffer from a noise, whereas when we subject it to feedback, signal to noise ratio gets improved. So, there will be reduction in the noise, more linear operation. So, uh, whenever we use an amplifier, we accept a predictable behavior that is given the input I should be able to calculate the output. So, what we accept? We accept the system to be linear in the operation. Open loop gain amplifiers linearity is improved, so that is linearity is improved by feedback. So, so many advantages feedback provides, increased impedance, stable gain improved frequency response, low output impedance, reduced noise and more linear operation. So, those all these all are achieved, okay. these all are achieved ok, fine. So, so these all are achieved with one disadvantage which is lower gain. So, we have a lower gain. So, gain will be lowered, that is a compromise, but we can have many advantages because of this negative feedback. Later on, this lower gain can be further improved by depending on the parameters which we want to have in the feedback amplifier. So, this is one disadvantage. So, these what all we have discussed now are the feedback concepts. Okay. So, we have discussed about general feedback structure, okay. we have discussed about general feedback structures, we have discussed about advantages of feedback, negative feedback, block diagram. Okay. So, these all are the feedback concepts. Next, what we are going to discuss is different feedback connection types. So, I have voltage series feedback, voltage series feedback, voltage shunt feedback, current series feedback, current shunt feedback. So, there are four types of feedback connections. Voltage series feedback is followed for voltage amplifiers in the sense the part of the voltage which is fed back, it adds in series with the input voltage. So, it is called as voltage series feedback. These are used for voltage amplifiers. So, lot of voltage amplifiers involve this voltage series feedback. We have voltage shunt feedback. Voltage shunt feedback in the sense part of the output voltage is which is fed back, it is in parallel with the input voltage. So, it is called as voltage shunt feedback. This is used as special category of amplifiers, which are trans resistance amplifiers. Then we have current series feedback. So, current series feedback consists of those amplifiers, where current which is fed back, it subtracts from the input. So, it is called as current series feedback, it is used in transconductance amplifiers. We have one more current amplifiers, which is current shunt feedback. So, this current shunt feedback is involved, where current is fed back in parallel with respect to the input. So, you have four configurations, this is employed for current amplifiers. So, these four configurations we are studying, this entire module we are studying about these four configurations, different type of what is first we will be looking at how is the connection of voltage series feedback, how is the connection of all these three 
topologies we are going to discuss. Each circuit and each practical circuit for each of these topologies we are going to discuss. First is voltage series feedback. Okay. So, here this circuitry involves voltage series feedback. So, you have a input supply V s. So, you can see the general structure of this voltage series feedback here. Here A represents open loop gain of the amplifier, beta represents gain of the feedback network, A f is the gain of feedback amplifier. So, this parameter is A f here, A f equals to V naught divided by V s, which is not visible here, it is A f equal to V naught by V s. So, what this topology consists of? This topology consists of input voltage source V s an amplifier which is A equal to V naught by V i, a feedback network beta equals to V f by V naught. So, here you have a input voltage V s, a feedback voltage V f, difference between V s and V f acts as V i here. So, there is a difference, this is V s, this is V f, V s minus V f is equal to V i, this is fed to the amplifier the amplifier gain is A equal to V naught by V i. Feedback network gain is, so whatever is amplified output, it is taken in parallel. You can see here, output voltage is taken in parallel, it is fed to feedback network. The output of feedback network is added in series, this is series connection here. So, it is called as voltage series feedback. So, there is a continuous feedback. feedback subtracts V s, V i, output will be A into V i, the amplified output is again fed back to the feedback network. Okay. So, this is voltage series feedback. So, this figure is only to illustrate how is the connection. So, connection is feedback is in series with the V s here. So, this illustrates voltage series feedback. Next, similarly, we have voltage shunt feedback. So, here input represents that is we at the input we had earlier V s. Now, we have considered a Norton's equivalent of the input source V s. We have a current source I s at the input. The current source I s generates the current I i. The gain of the amplifier is A equal to V naught divided by I i. So, here what we are measuring here is output, whereas parameter or a controlling parameter is input current here. I s denotes source current, I i is the effective input current to the amplifier, output voltage is fed back, beta is equals to I f by V naught. The current which is fed back, it is sub, it subtracts from the source here. Feedback current is I f equal to beta into V naught. So, here V naught or the output voltage is converted to the current here. The I i is difference between I s and I i, I s and I f. So, I i is a difference between I s and I f that acts as the input current here. So, total closed loop gain will be A f equal to V naught divided by I s here. So, this is also called as trans resistance amplifier, output is voltage, whereas the input is a current here. Okay. So, voltage by current is a resistance, at the output we are measuring voltage, at the input we have the current here. So, it is called as trans resistance or it is also called as voltage shunt feedback amplifiers. Now, we have current series feedback. Okay. Now, what is an important point to note here? We are just looking at the connections here. So, there is an input voltage source V s, amplifier A equal to I naught by V i, feedback network beta equals to V f by I naught. You can see the current here, output the interest parameter is current here, interested parameter I naught is equal to I l here, current is fed back. There is again a difference between V s and V f. 
So now what actually we are measuring here is a current difference. This current difference results, this difference between Vs and Vf results in Vi that will result in an output current I0 here. So here also we are feeding the signal in a series. So it is called as current series feedback. Further we have one more topology, current shunt feedback. So this is a current shunt feedback topology consists of an amplifier A, a feedback network beta, input current source I s, input current I i, output current I naught equal to I l, feedback current I f which is equals to beta into I naught. So you have this topology current shunt feedback is widely used for current amplifiers. So when we are designing any current amplifiers, this type of topology is used. So what you can see here, current is fed in parallel here. So you have a current I i here, this current I i is a subtraction or the difference between I s and I f. So difference between I s and I f generates the current I i here. Further it is amplified by an amount A, A equal to I naught by I. So you will get load current or the output current. So although output is tapped in a shunt or in a parallel, it is mixed, output is tapped in a series and it is mixed in a parallel at the input. So it is called as current shunt feedback. So here gain is I naught by I, I s. So I naught represents my output current and I s represents the source current. So these are the four kinds of feedback connections. So to summarize, so we had started with four feedback connection types. We are just discussing how it is a connection. Voltage series we have discussed, the feedback voltage mixes in a series. So here the feedback voltage, it mixes in a series with the input. Then next voltage shunt feedback, so voltage mixes in shunt here with the input. Current series feedback, so again current mixes in series with the input here and uh, here current mixes in parallel, so it is current shunt feedback. So these all the four uh, types we have discussed. Now let us consider, we have discussed so many advantages of feedback, right? If you can recall, the negative feedback results in stable gain, improved frequency response. So we have discussed these all, right? Lot of parameters we have discussed there is a input impedance increased, more stable gain we have observed, improved frequency response. These all let us verify with respect to each connection type. Okay. We will begin with the first topology, voltage series feedback. Okay. So this is the first topology, recall the diagram. We have input signal source Vs, an amplifier, V naught by V i, feedback network V f by V naught. So here feedback voltage mixes in a series with the input voltage and it generates the error signal or the input signal V i. So let us see how we can achieve these all parameters, how there is a input impedance improved, how output impedance gets decreased. These are the major points. Okay. Let us look at it. Okay. Now here, so let us mathematically look at what is a closed loop gain and how we will observe. See this is input source V s, you have a error signal V i, you have a feedback network beta here. So source, amplifier, feedback network and an output voltage. If V f is included, so here if V f is fed back here, then V i will be equal to V s minus V f. You can further express V naught. V naught is what? A into, A is the gain of an amplifier. 
So, V naught is A into V i, which is equals to A into bracket V s minus V f or equal to A into V s minus A into V f. So, V naught is equal to A into V s minus A into beta into V naught. Rearranging the terms, you will get A f equal to V naught by V s equal to A divided by 1 plus A into A beta. So, this is actually A f here. So, See, this is uh, visible from our control concepts, control systems concepts also. A is the forward loop, beta is the backward loop. So, forward gain A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, this 1 plus A into beta is called as loop gain. So, what you will observe? Gain has reduced. A f is equal to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, A has reduced here. A got reduced, but as we can see there is a more stability in the gain. Now, let us look at input impedance. So, how the input impedance of the voltage series feedback gets improved. So, I have a V s here, V s represents the source voltage. This is an amplifier network, this amplifier network consists of now, the C earlier I have discussed amplifier as a one black box. We have represented amplifier one black box. Now, we are just opening up this amplifier. We are putting some details here. So, input impedance of the amplifier, we are representing it as R i. What amplifier does? Amplifier amplifies. So, whatever is the input V i, it is observed at the output V naught as A into V i. So, this action we are representing it by one voltage source. So, this voltage source represents the output. So, V i is the input to the amplifier, output is A into V i. By nature, each amplifier, this is amplifier which is open loop has on one, one output impedance. So, we are representing it as R naught. So, R i represents input impedance of the amplifier, R naught represents output impedance of the amplifier, which is open loop, not the closed loop. We have one more parameter R i f, R i f or we can call it as Z i f. So, this represents input impedance of this entire closed loop amplifier. So, that is R i f, Z i f okay? or Z i f. V s we have seen source voltage, this is the feedback network. So, amplifier produces the output voltage V naught. This output voltage V naught is fed back in a parallel to the feedback network. Feedback network attenuates or samples, it generates a voltage V f equals to beta into V naught that mixes in a series with the V s and it generates a signal V i. So, V i is equals to V s minus V f. Okay. So, that is being seen here as the input of the amplifier. Further, we have R o f, R o f you can say or a Z o f, which represents output impedance of the amplifier which is a closed loop. So, R naught is open loop amplifier impedance, R o f is closed loop amplifier impedance. So, it can be denoted as R o f or it can be denoted as Z o f. We can have R i f or Z i f, which is representing the input impedance of this closed loop amplifier. So, this is V naught, we are generating the feedback voltage. As we all know, A is V naught by V i, gain of the open loop amplifier, beta is the gain of the feedback network, A f is equals to V naught by V s equals to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, that we have already proved in the previous slide, we have already seen this. Now, let us look at the input impedance of the voltage series feedback. So, we are deriving R i f or Z i f. So, this is the input current, how I can express the input current? Input current I can express as I i. Okay. So, the input current flows 
at the input of the amplifier. So, it can be expressed as V i divided by Z i. Okay. So, how I can visualize here? So, this is my amplifier A equal to V naught by V s. So, the voltage is fed back, we have feedback network here. So, there is a feedback occurring. So, I have a current I I which is flowing here at the input of the amplifier. So, we are deriving this current I I. So, I have a current I I. So, this current I I, I am expressing it as V i divided by Z i. So, V i is appearing at the input of the amplifier. So, as you can see, so you have a V i here. So, V i is at the input current I i here. We know that current is voltage divided by resistance. So, resistance I have used here as Z i. So, this Z i represents input impedance of the open loop amplifier. So, current I i is V i by Z i which is equals to V s minus V f divided by Z i. So, what the feedback is doing? Negative feedback here. So, it subtracts. So, V s minus V f divided by Z i or it is equal to V s minus V f can be expressed as beta into V naught. So, it is V s minus beta into V naught divided by Z i which is equal to further I can express V naught. V naught can be substituted as A into V i. So, we have seen this V naught can be put as A into V i. So, this is output V naught which is appearing. So, V naught can be put as A into V i. So, it is V s minus A into beta into V i divided by Z i. Current I i equals to V s minus A into beta into V i divided by Z i. So, you can rearrange the terms current I i into Z i equals to V s minus A into beta into V i, which is further you can rearrange the terms containing I i and Z i to the one side. So, further I i into Z i plus beta into A into V i, you can solve it. It will be Z i f that is impedance of closed loop amplifier. So, when I talk about Z i f, Z i f represents input impedance of this entire closed loop amplifier. So, you have source here, you have load here. So, Z i f represents input impedance as seen from the input side. Okay. So, this is I am calculating, whereas Z i is input impedance of the open loop amplifier. You can observe that Z i f gets improved. Z i f is equal to Z i into bracket 1 plus A into beta. So, it Z i f is Z i into bracket 1 plus A into beta. What is the improvement in the impedance? Original impedance was Z i. New impedance which is Z i f is 1 plus A into beta times Z i. So, you have input impedance gets improved. This is why we subject the amplifier to the feedback. Okay. The input impedance gets improved by the factor 1 plus A into beta. Now, we have discussed one more parameter output impedance. So, what we have told about output impedance? Output impedance reduces, output impedance reduces by a factor of 1 plus A into beta. We can derive for that also. So, what we are doing basically we have derived the closed loop gain for voltage series feedback. We have derived input impedance for the voltage series feedback. Now, we are deriving output impedance of the voltage series feedback. So, in order to der derive this output impedance, we just consider output section of the amplifier. So, here we have seen the output section. 
right. So, we have in the output section of the amplifier A into V i R naught output. So, let us consider only this output section, we are considering only this output section A into V i is the output voltage R naught, because why I why I am considering output section, I want to find out output impedance. So, in order to calculate this output impedance, we are considering only the output section of this amplifier. Okay. So, now procedure, general procedure for determining the output impedance is that, input signal source is set to 0, that is V s shorted out, V s is set to 0 and a test voltage V. Okay. We are applying a one test voltage V at the output. So, the load resistance we have removed, we have applying a test voltage V, which generates a current I. We have A into V I and further we have R naught. Now, I can express this output voltage V. This output voltage V can be expressed as I into Z naught plus A into V I. So, what is this R naught or Z naught? Instead of R naught, we have used the term here Z naught. R naught or Z naught are same. Z naught is a collective term, R naught is particularly a resistance. So, here we are calling it as Z naught. V is equals to current I into Z naught plus A into V i, but we have kept V s is equals to 0. So, V i is V s minus V f, which will be minus V f. Let us substitute in this. Simplify, you will get Z o f, that is output impedance. So, when we talk about Z O F. So, this is Z O F output impedance as seen from the output side. So, this is for the entire feedback amplifier, right. So, what I am seeing from the output side excluding the load. So, the load is not included here, we are not considering the load for our analysis. So, Z O F is equals to V by I, okay. V is the applied voltage, I is the current. So, impedance is voltage by current, I will get it as Z naught divided by 1 plus E into beta. So, what you can observe? Feedback further reduces the output impedance. Earlier output was Z naught, now it became 1 plus Z naught divided by 1 plus E into beta. So, like this the parameters get amplified. So, voltage amplifiers, all the voltage amplifiers require that, there is a, all the voltage amplifiers require that, you have, there has to be improvement in the input impedance, decrease in the output impedance. Okay. So, to summarize this, so we have discussed, what all aspects we have discussed. First, we started with concept of feedback, right. So, what is the concept of feedback? We have a general structure. We subject this amplifier A to a feedback with a feedback gain of beta. So, you have a closed loop gain A f equal to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. What is the purpose of applying this feedback? to improve lot of parameters. We have used negative feedback. So, this negative feedback ach achieves lot of parameters. So, these all parameters will be achieved. Input impedance, gain, improved frequency response, lowered output impedance, reduced noise and a more linear operation. Okay. So, these all are there which are achieved these are achieved at the lower gain. Further, we saw all the topologies, voltage series, voltage shunt, current series, current shunt. So, these all the topologies we have observed. What is a voltage series feedback? To summarize, feedback voltage is mixed in a series with the V s and you will get the V i. V i is the error signal here, which is a difference between V s and V f. Okay. So, it is a series feedback, feedback network generates output voltage which mixes in series here okay. and we have so seen the closed loop amplifier, 
Now, whenever I am referring a divided by 1 plus a into beta or a f, a f denotes the closed loop amplifier, which is a divided by 1 plus a into beta. We have also seen the input impedance of voltage series feedback, it got improved. Output impedance also we have seen, it got reduced. Similarly, in the coming classes or the coming sessions, we will be discussing about other configurations. So, the next configuration, what I am having is voltage shunt feedback. Okay. So, voltage shunt feedback, basically what we are doing here, we are mixing the voltage, we are tapping the voltage in parallel and mixing it in pa parallel again with the input, such that current is reduced or current is subtracted from the source. So, the input voltage source, I have represented it by a current source I s, you have a current I i, an amplifier A, which is V naught by I i, a feedback network beta equals to I f by V naught. So, overall gain A f, we have seen overall gain A f is output divided by input. So, output is V naught. So, this is the V naught output, input is I s, V naught by I s it is an current amplifier. So, gain is A into I i divided by I s, which mixes such that it adds here I i plus I f. I s I can express it as I i plus I f. Substitute for I f, which is beta into V naught, I i is common everywhere, cancel it out. So, A f is A divided by 1 plus A into beta. Further, for all configuration, we will see that gain gets reduced by the factor 1 plus A into beta. So, A f is equal to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, here the feedback gets, feedback reduces the gain. We also see that input impedance here, uh, in the voltage series feedback, input impedance got improved, whereas here it, it will be reduced. So, it will be reduced in case of voltage shunt feedback. Okay. So, this is the way all parameters get modified. We will further discuss about voltage shunt feedback again in the next session. Okay. Thank you.